Hello and welcome back to the channel. If it is your first time here, my name is Danny K. And uh, yes, here we talk about everything concerning brand design and also show you behind the scenes on brand photography. Today we'll be working on a brand design uh, together like I used to do. And today we'll be working on a wellness brand. Um, I'm really sorry that I've been inconsistent on this particular channel for a long while now. I've been occupied with some client projects and also some other personal engagements. But I will try my possible best to be more consistent here going forward. So these are the steps that we are going to be following during this particular brand design. If you have any questions, leave it as a comment here and I'll be available here to attend to it. So the brand we're working on today is a health and wellness brand and the name is Aroma Business. So um, these are the project goals and everything that has to do with it. Now, in terms of the mood board, I always go to Pinterest for inspirations. I also go to Behance sometimes, but mostly I work from Pinterest. I gather a collection of images that will inspire me on what I want to create. Things I, I pin at stuff like packaging, photography, the typography, color style, and everything. So after I've done the, 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 that particular process of pinning, the, pin, the, pinning the images I want, I now move them to Illustrator where I put together the mood board. So the, the mood board is to give me inspiration on what I am about to create because it's always good to have an image of what you want to work on. You know, it will help you in terms of directing the kind of assets you're going to be creating, how the brand will look finally. So after I've done with the mood board creation, I get to the next stage, which is the sketching. Now, the essence of uh, sketching is to help me pour out the ideas I have in my head. And I'll always start by, first of all, writing out the brand name and then doing mind mapping. And what by, my, what by mind mapping, I mean writing out the list of words that come to my mind. These are what are going to give me the ideas to make my sketches, you know, to generate ideas and generate concepts for the actual logo design. I remember, like I used to say on this particular channel, you don't need to know how to draw for you to be able to generate these particular sketch ideas. Just put together some ideas that are in your head, which you later develop when you get to Illustrator. So to vectorize the, the, the logo concept, I always use Illustrator. Uh, you can always use other ones, but Illustrator is always the, the standard uh, industry tool. Um, some persons use Photoshop to design their logo, but I don't recommend it because Photoshop doesn't give you a good file that you can use for different things. I take a photo of the sketch I made, then I bring it to, to Illustrator and I'll pick my pen tool and I'll begin to, you know, trace the image. I always find pen tool more convenient to use. You can also use a pencil and other, other drawing tools that if, you, if, if it is more convenient for you. As you can see, I'm speeding the process because I don't want it. I don't want it to be too long. If it is too long, it's going to bore you. So 
to go ahead to make some other refinements you know, get things neat i always like to get things as neat as possible then i'll go to choosing the typography that we're going to be using for the logo type just play with a different thing it's always good also to to go back to the mood board if you need to and see the kind of vibe that you're looking to get it will help you to choose the kind of typographic style that will work for the logo type So other things I also do to make this particular thing unique is that I go as far as customizing this particular typography. I don't just leave the, the fonts as I pick them. I go as far as customizing them, playing with them. Um, one particular tool on Illustrator that I've, I found that worked very well for me in customizing fonts is the pencil tool. So you can use the pencil tool to add extra uh, you know, shapes. To, to, to what you're doing. If you need to remove some things, you use the eraser tool. Just play with with the entire thing. When I got to this particular stage, I didn't really like how it looked. So I made further refinement on the type on the typography, which is the logo type. And I also decided to play with some other things, bringing in shapes to really see the difference that uh, the logo will make. I always say it on this particular channel, when you are making different versions of the logo, always make a copy. Don't work on the original so that you'll be able to go back to it if need be you know so uh, and also don't limit yourself to one particular concept allow your creative juice to flow so that you'll be able to at the end of the whole day get something that definitely will work for the type of work you want to create and also for your clients so if, if you compare these two right now you can see that this is the initial one we had and by including this particular shape behind the the logo icon we have something that we were able to work with so now i want to play with the the, the brand colors that I've chosen to make sure that the logo will work well in different brand colors too. The logo, whatever logo you have to design has to work in black and white. So now we want to design the brand assets and the brand assets that you're going to be designing at the end of the day they will depend on the brand you are working on. If you need to, to create a die line, it depends on the type of product you are working on. I already worked on the on the on the box. Now I'm working on the level for the jar that will go in, into the box. So always get the measurement of the of the of the level. The that is the scale, the level that you're going to be designing. Always get the measurement. It will help you to give your clients what they will be able to work with. There is no point of uh, creating a label that they will not be able to use. After all, they are paying you to get for your professional um, work. So. After everything, now I'm putting together some mock-up to really see how the final uh, designs that I did will look. At this particular stage, it really feels beautiful seeing the entire thing that you created coming to life. So now I'm putting together a kind of a presentation to, to showcase to the clients what the brand will, uh, will, will look like. And like I said initially, the different brand colors that you chose, always try and see if, if the, the logo is going to work in all of them because it's really important so that they'll be able to produce um, the, the logo in different formats and different environments, you know, in any time they may need to do such things in the future. So now I'm putting together the entire mock-up that I did. This will help to visualize to the clients what their brand will actually look, uh, look like. It also help you to sell your design concepts to the clients instead of just sending the logo and then leaving the person wondering what the actual brand will look like.
Thank you so much for watching and if you love this particular video, please remember to subscribe and also like the video. It will help the YouTube algorithm to show the, showcase the video to more people that will find the video useful. 